he was in a position where they asked the vet, you know, because what, what do we need to do with him? And he said, I'd put him down. You know, he had worked on the horse and he had seen him for quite a while. And, um, you know, they just didn't really have many options with him. So that's kind of what they concluded. And that's when they asked me about taking him. And uh, anyways, yeah, he's having a good time. He's enjoying life. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Like, he's pretty young still. So he's got a long life ahead of him. You could say Pete and Amanda May have given new meaning to the term put out to pasture. The couple has created a non-profit group called the Cutting Edge Retirement Foundation for horses in need of a caring home following show careers that ended from injury or old age. It all began four years ago when the Mays took in an abandoned pony. And the little pony was one that uh, my brother and I had saved. She was left alone, had real long feet. We had to cut them off with the saw and that kind of deal. And Ended up having her for, was it 12 years? Mm -hmm. But um, we, long story short, we ended up taking in two more ponies. One was blind and the other one had feet similar to the one that we cut off. And that was when I was like, well, we should just make this official and try to get help taking care of more of these guys, so. I don't think we're gonna whack it open. So he's got a shoe ball. Once word got out, Pete and Amanda found room for almost 30 horses, many of which suffer from various lameness and health issues. As a master farrier, Pete is well equipped to rehab and care for the horses, but he also gets expert help from two vets, Dr. Charlie Buchanan and Dr. Scott Strasnyder from the Brazos Valley Equine Hospital. The pair donate their time, vaccinations and drugs to the foundation. We just kind of got involved just by being around, I guess, being available. Um, and then just continue on the work on the horses as as they, you know, got out of their career as a as an athlete athlete, um, moved on to I guess a better life now, and where they are, and just make sure that their their quality of life is good as they go through retirement. Uh, excellent cause. Uh, really nice to be a part of a group that thinks about the horse past their athletic career. So being partnered with Charlie, I've been able to see quite a few horses be passed be passed along to to an, another career. A, a lot of the horses have. Um, not really career-ending injuries, but just like any professional athlete, right? They'll get arthritis, and they have injuries that uh, affect their career, and as as they age, um, they, those injuries progress and become worse. And then if you don't attend to them, they become they can become worse. Um, and then you get secondary health problems because they're, they're stressed because they're not healthy and they're lame. Chronic pain causes a lot of problems. You can get ulcers. Um, so if you can address the the arthritis in the in the working sports injuries, um, you can avoid the secondary complications, medical issues, um, and the quality of life of those horses is a lot better. You know, the the benefit of this program is Pete's a great farrier, great horseshoer, um, and a lot of the problems they have can be addressed with proper shoeing, and that makes a huge difference on the soundness of those horses and the the chronic injuries. So, well, we've got uh, Spooky's Katmandu, which a lot of people know him. Um, I believe he earned over 100, almost $170,000. Uh, we have Widow's Peak, um, which he won the non-pro super stakes with Becky Clark. Uh, we had Duel and Jewels. He, he passed away, but uh, he had earned over 200000 and he was a, a reserve fraternity champion. Uh, we got old Pudge out there. He's a world champion calf horse. Yeah. Uh, and he's got knees that big, you know, so. Uh, it's, it's neat having different things to work with and different injuries to maintain because it just, well, it helps my knowledge and I'm able to experiment a little bit. If something's not working, I can make adjustments and kind of find what works for each horse as an individual. The Mays use most of their 23 acres to accommodate the horses. A friend lets them use another 20 acres down the road, but they still cannot keep up with demand. So they started an adoption program to continue helping more horses. The numbers grew so fast and we realized that uh, we had several horses that were low enough maintenance and that could be good horses for other people, either as a, a companion horse or a yard ornament or, you know, even a trail horse or uh, something for the kids to ride. So uh, that's when we started to, you know, look into adopting some out and we've been successful there. We've had some great people adopt some of the horses and they've gone on. It's, it's almost a completion of the process because we, with the number of horses we have here, we can't give them as much individual attention as someone who adopts them. After donating some hay to the Retirement Foundation, dog trainers Pat and Kim Sirio decided they had some acres to spare and a horse that needed some company. 
I feel strongly that horses shouldn't be alone. And so he was just kind of miserable. He had always had friends. And um, unfortunately, his one buddy colicked and died last year. So he just kind of moped around for a while. And we felt like getting him a friend would, would be really beneficial to him. Right. And, and we were in a position with our property that we had, and we could accommodate having uh, more had more had a horse on the, on the property, so it just seemed like a natural fit, you know. Our our our, our Frankie needed a buddy, and uh, we came here looking for a buddy, and we ended up leaving with three, which uh, which is fantastic, and I wish we could take more. So how did but, one uh, turn into three? Oh, you, just, you, you fell in love with three horses? Uh, absolutely, we came here looking for one for for a pasture mate, and then I thought to myself, well, she's not going to let me get a you know get away with just getting one, so I figured out, you know, I had, I had in my head we're going to get two. And then I, you know, we kind of had two that we were looking at, and then I saw another one that I really liked, and I'm like, well, if we're getting two, we might as well get three. So, and then I'm like, okay, well, maybe that's at the three. Is, three is good for now, and uh, and we left with three, and uh, we we just absolutely love them. And how does it make you guys feel knowing that you've given three horses a good home? Uh, I I can't see coming down that uh, coming down our drive and not and not and not having them there. I can't I can't imagine life without it. Um, it's been it's been a win win. Um, it's like, you know, they, they, they see us as, as them helping them out, but they've helped us out. They've made our lives better. It's a little overwhelming sometimes just trying to get it all done, but um, it's really a great feeling at the end of the day. And uh, like I develop a relationship with these horses over the years, whether I'm working on them in the barns or, or they're living here. So it's, I don't know, you just get attached to them and you get ones that are your favorites and it's really it's nice to see them be able to be horses and, and live that kind of life, you know. And Pete and Amanda say they wouldn't have been able to operate the foundation without outside support, and they welcome any donations of cash, feed, or medical supplies, or interest in adopting a horse. <laughs>